Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another podcast. This is a studio-based podcast today, as due to the lockdown, I cannot get out and do the usual fly fishing podcast from the river. That said, it's something I've been meaning to do for a while, and the opportunity has kind of presented itself, so it's something I will hopefully continue to do. In this podcast, we're going to discuss fly fishing leaders, which is a, an area of confusion for quite a few people. I think, firstly, let's start with the area that most people get confused about, and that is the difference between leaders and tippets. So all a tippet really is, is a fine section of line that's tied on to the end of your leader. And in normal circumstances, that might be two, three or four feet in length, something like that. And this tippet section is always going to be a slightly finer diameter to the rest of your leader. So let's say our uh, main leader ends with a diameter of 0.22 millimetres. I could then, for sake of argument, tie on a short tippet section of something like 0.18 millimetres. So slightly finer diameter than the rest of the leader. Uh, And in practical terms, that will also probably mean that your braking strain is slightly less for the tippet section. So in that example, it may be that the the main leader ends with a braking strain of eight pounds and then the tippet section has a braking strain of six pounds. So what's the point of a tippet? Well, there's a couple of reasons that people often use tippets. Firstly, it's to make sure that the last little section of line just before it's tied onto the fly is going to be as as fine, as, as invisible as you possibly can get it, to make sure that there's as less chance as possible as the fish actually seeing that last little bit of leader so it's to aid your to aid your presentation to make sure that it's as fine as possible there will be times as well when you're using small flies where you physically need a thinner diameter line just to get it through the eye of the hook so that can be a, um, if you're using very small 18s and size 20 flies then a, a finer tippet section will will help also just the pr- presentation of the fly those very small flies you'll need a finer uh, section of line just to make sure that your knot is still in proportion to the size of the fly and also your finer tippet section will aid your presentation it will help the leader and the tippet and the fly all turn over and land in a straight line The second reason that people uh, often use tippets is financial, really. Leaders can be expensive and every time you cut into your leader to change your fly, you're making your leader shorter um, and therefore it's not going to last as long. But if you attach a section of tippet at the end, when you cut in uh, to change your fly, you're actually cutting into the tippet and not the leader. And you can do this several times before the tippet section gets too short. And then you're only cutting into your leader once to then replace the tippet. So it will make your leaders last a lot longer than they would without a tippet. So that's a little bit of an explanation about what a tippet is. I'll start now talking about some of the leaders that we may use in fly fishing. There's quite a few different types of leaders. I'll start with uh, the most simple, which often is referred to as a parallel leader. A parallel leader is simply a piece of leader where the diameter is the same all the way through. It's often line just pulled off a spool, which can then be cut to your desired length. And if you're using a heavy fly, such as a nymph or a lure, then a parallel leader may be all that's required as the weight of the fly itself is enough to straighten the leader during the turnover. And these kinds of leaders are often uh, used when we're casting on large still waters, such as reservoirs, where big flies are used uh, and a delicate presentation isn't really required. Um, The advantage of a parallel leader is very cheap and they're easily replaced. Quite often, you won't use a tippet when you're using a parallel leader. Uh, In fact, you may actually just use tippet material pulled off a spool for the entire leader itself. The next type of leader, and very, very common, is a 
tapered leader. Uh, tapered leaders are bought in a packet and they're a fixed length, normally uh, between seven and 12 feet. They often come in a seven foot, a nine foot or a 12 foot length for trout fishing. Uh, the most popular length by far is a nine foot tapered leader. And as the name suggests, a tapered leader has a tapered diameter along the length of the leader. The end that connects to your fly line is thick and the leader gradually becomes thinner as it travels down its length. And this tapered leader transfers the energy of your cast more efficiently down to the fly. So things will turn over, will straighten and land a little bit nicer on the water with a tapered leader. That said, a little caveat to that is a tapered leader is not a cure to a faulty cast. If you're not turning over your cast well, then a tapered leader isn't going to correct that for you. But once you can cast, once you're creating a nice tight loop, then it will transfer that energy down to the fly a little more efficiently. So it will help you with your turnover. You'll find tapered leaders especially useful when you're trying to cast really big bushy flies that aren't aerodynamic and you need every single bit of help you can get to actually get that fly to turn over and land nicely. So you will often find people using tapered leaders when they're dry fly fishing or fishing little wet spiders or little nymphs on rivers where they really want to get the best possible turnover for the fly. They're not as widely used for lure fishing or fishing big heavy nymphs on reservoirs because they're not really required. So up next is a polycoated leader. Really all a polycoated leader is is a little extension of your fly line itself and they will come in different grades from floating right down to heavy sinking. Um, they'll have a loop on both ends. One loop attaches to your fly line and the other loop will attach to your tippet. So what's the point of a poly leader? Well, say for instance you were using a floating fly line and you decided that you wanted to actually get your fly down a little deeper on the reservoir, then Attaching a sinking poly leader to the end of your fly line, effectively what it gives you is a sink tip fly line, um, which will cut down through the water and get your fly to a greater depth. I often use them for uh, saltwater fly fishing. Uh, I use a, a floating saltwater line and then I'll attach a, a sinking a poly leader to the end of my floating line and that just cuts my fly down and cuts the end of the fly line and digs it into the water. And that's really useful when you're saltwater fly fishing because of all the swell and the waves moving the fly line about. Without it, you'll just find that the, the floating line just coils up very quickly into a big mess yet the the sinking poly leader digs down and it anchors the fly line so they can be used in circumstances like that to give you control over your fly line and your fishing and you can have a, a little wallet in your bag with a selection of poly leaders in there from floating to intermediate slow sink fast sink and it just opens up some more possibilities and allows you to present flies in different ways at different depths without having to buy lots of new fly lines poly leaders come in lots of different lengths Something around five foot is roundabout standard for trout fishing and you will get longer lengths for other types of fishing, salmon fishing and things like that. And you can also get poly leaders that you can actually cut down to the length you want as well. In terms of the length of tippet you will tie on the end of your poly leader, it's really down to personal preference and what you're trying to achieve with your fishing. But for kind of standard trout fishing, I would think around somewhere starting at five or six feet and going upwards from there, depending on how good your casting is. And obviously, the longer your leader is, the harder it is to get it all to turn over and to land straight. So experiment and, and see what kind of suits your casting style and fishing the best. And last, we've got a braided leader. Now, a braided leader... Um, what it achieves is really similar to the poly leader, except instead of being made with a plastic coating, um, it's made out of braid. Um, and you can get these in different sink rates from uh, floating right down to fast sinking. Um, a braided leader will either have a, a small loop at the end onto which to attach your tippet, or sometimes a little metal tippet ring can be used and you can attach your tippet to there. 
Um, and again, you can use a braided leader much the same as you would the poly leader. You can use it to, to get control over your fishing and fly by using a, a sinking uh, braided leader that will dig in. Uh, a lot of people um, say that they feel a braided leader helps them with their turnover. I don't use them myself, so it's not something I can really comment on. Now, for me personally, I would only really ever use the poly leader or the braided leader if I needed something that was going to sink. So I'd only use these two leaders in in a sinking form or an intermediate form. I personally, and this is only my personal view, wouldn't see the point in using a poly leader or a, um, a braided leader if it was floating on a floating fly line because for me the point of the leader is to provide an invisible link between the visible fly line and your fly and the longer that invisible link is the less chance you've got of spooking a fish now if you are using a poly leader or a braided leader it's clearly visible uh, to the fish so effectively what you're doing is shortening the invisible link between fly and visible fly line now there's a big caveat to that is that lots of people do use floating braided and floating poly leaders they swear that it improves their um, turnover and presentation and they do catch plenty of fish leaders are very subjective and that's my own personal view my recommendation is have a go try them and if they suit you and you catch and you enjoy fishing with them then go for it so next i'm going to talk about leader material and this applies to your tapered leaders your parallel leaders and your tippets as well generally tapered leaders tippets and parallel leaders are either made of fluorocarbon monofilament or copolymer again this is an area that can confuse people your copolymers your fluorocarbons your monofilaments all have lots of advantages and disadvantages on paper they're often the source of discussion on the internet discussion with gillies when you go fishing i think the one rule that you need to stick by is don't use fluorocarbon if you're fishing dry flies and the reason for that is fluorocarbon has a tendency to sink so it will pull your fly down and it will also dig into the surface of the water meaning that when you pick off to recast even if it's not sunk your fly it's likely it will just rip your fly down under the surface as you pick off so avoid using fluorocarbon for dry fly fishing apart from that you can use fluorocarbon, a monofilament, copolymer in ever which way you want. The, the arguments go that fluorocarbon is less visible in water to fish. There's arguments on the other side, though, that, that say that fluorocarbon, if it gets a nick in it, will become a lot more brittle. Uh, certainly, uh, anecdotally, I, I do get more knots tend to snap um, when using fluorocarbon. When I go salmon fishing up in Scotland, um, most of the gillies up there will take a sharp um, inhale of breath and suck through the teeth if they see you getting some fluorocarbon out to use as your salmon leader. Most of them prefer good old-fashioned Maxima monofilament up there as well. But again, as with leaders in general, a lot of this discussion tends to be subjective. My advice would be find a material that works for you that you're comfortable with, that you have confidence in, that you enjoy fishing with, and just stick with it. Right, now I'm going to discuss the breaking strain of leaders. And again, this applies to tapered leaders, parallel leaders, and tippets. If you pick up a tapered leader in a packet or pick up a spool of tippet, you will see some writing on it. Uh, and the chances are you may get three or four different measurements printed on the side. You will probably get the breaking strain in pounds. You might get also the breaking strain in kilograms. Then you will probably get the diameter measured in millimeters. And then you will often get the X value. And that will say something like 1X or 2X or 3X. Now the X value, the X scale, harks back to when leaders were actually made from stretch silkworm gut. And they... Uh, the more times they were run through the machine, the finer and finer they became. So a 4X was run four times through the machine and 
was that fine and a 6x was run six times through the machine was a bit finer and still that x scale exists today so the lower the x um the higher the braking strain of leader so a 1x leader for example maybe something around 12 or 13 pounds 14 pounds braking strain where an 8x leader will often be something around a pound and a half 1.7 2 pounds braking strain something like that so the higher the x value the thinner the diameter will be and the weaker the braking strain will be now i quite like the x scale and still use it regularly when i'm teaching just because it's so simple and it's just one nice simple measurement so here's a few examples of the type of leaders i might use in different situations if i was fishing a reservoir for stocked rainbows um, anywhere between probably a 3x uh, and a 4x leader maybe a 2x leader if there was some especially big fish in there but yeah 2 3 or 4x would be pretty standard for me for reservoir fishing for stock rainbows if i was fly fishing for trout and grayling on the river anywhere from a 4x probably right up to 7x depending on the the snags the pace of the river the size of the fish um, my standard river kit really would be to use a 5x tapered leader with a 6x tippet so i think we should also have a quick look at leader length as a bare minimum i would suggest that the the length of your leader plus tippet should be at least a rod's length. So if you're using a nine foot fly rod, make sure that your leader and tippet is at least nine feet. As you improve, as you get better at casting, you can increase the length of leader and tippet. Um, obviously, the, the longer it is, logically, the better because the, the longer the invisible link is between the visible fly line and the fly, so the less chance of spooking fish. I know some anglers that fish really long leaders, especially on the reservoirs, especially with some more specialist methods like fishing the washing line and things like that. They might be using leaders of 20, 25 feet. Um, it does take a bit of skill to be able to turn over a leader of that length effectively. So start off with at least a rod's length, build it up from there and you won't go far wrong. I think just some closing words about leaders. It's an area of confusion. It's an area that people spend a lot of time fiddling around with. What I always say to my clients during instruction is if you're going from one type of leader to another to try and get your cast to turn over properly, it's probably not your leader that's the problem. If things are landing in a pile, if your leader's all kinked, if the fly's bunched up at the end, 99% of the time it's not a problem with your leader. It's going to be something that's going on with your cast. If you have any more questions at all about leaders, help and advice is always free. Just visit the website at www.peaksflyfishing.com. Go to the live chat in the bottom right hand side of the screen. Send me a message and I'll happily answer any questions. You can use the same website to find out more about our fly fishing lessons. And for more information on our fishing flies and tackle, it is shop dot peaks fly fishing dot com thanks for listening until next time bye bye